Hi everyone, Kieran of Asapian here from Filmstorm Studios and today we're going to have a look at how to create a third person camera system using the new Cinemachine for Unity. And when you get started, you'll be able to download this whole project from our site and when you load it up, you'll get everything except the animations. The animations are from our open world anim set which you can download from the Unity store. And once you import that, if you click on the character and you go to here, you'll be able to see that all we're using is the idle walk forward and jog. And as you can see, if we just drag this red one forward, we're just basically just making it walk, run and jog. And if we press play, this is what you'll get. So basically just a nice little running around, but we want to know how we can set up a camera. So to do that, just jump back make sure everything is all good okay so we want to go ahead and open the package manager and import the cinema machine so let's go to window package manager all and we want to go down to cinema machine and say install and then this will just go and download all of the source files from unity servers and import it and compile it and once that's ready to go we will notice a new tab will open up or menu item will open up at the top called cinema machine so if we close this now, we want to go to Cinemachine, free look camera, which is basically our third person camera. And we click that, a lot of things are gonna happen in the background. First, our main camera will get a Cinemachine brain added to it, which is nice and handy. It didn't used to do that, but now it does. And it also creates a CM free look camera. And you'll see a whole lot of options but we're going to go through and customize it so it's all set up nicely for what we want. So to get started, let's click on here and let's make sure we're in here and we just want to change this to something that we know. So CM underscore third person. So that way we know that this is our third person camera. And as you can see down here in the game, we're not really seeing anything. So let's um, just snap this over to the side so we can kind of get a reference point. And we need to be able to sync this to lock onto our um, player here. So let's make sure we can see these options to follow and look at. And let's drag our character, so Adam, into both of them. And you'll notice that our camera now starts to, is snapping on to this and it's looking at his feet. Now we don't want him to look at his feet. So we want to come down to the bottom here and you'll see it's split up into three different sections, the top rig, middle rig and bottom rig. And I find it's easier to kind of adjust it when we are in the middle. So if your Y axis value is 0 0.5, that's good. That means we're kind of in the middle. So let's come down and adjust the aim in the middle rig and you can drag this up and you'll probably want it to sit around his shoulder level. So about 1.4, let's make it 1.4. And then let's adjust each of these other ones. So you want the, the top rig to be 1.4 and you want this one to be 1.4 as well. So that way they're all in the same level. Perfect. Okay, now let's have a look. And you can see already we have like some circles going around here. And these, this middle one is the middle rig. This is the top rig circle and this is the bottom rig. And if we adjust these different values, you can see the camera on the left here sliding up and down that kind of curvature uh, like circles depending on what these values are, the top rig. So we can actually adjust the radiuses and heights of these different rigs. So we're basically, if we're gonna set this back to 0 0.5, there you go, it's basically right on that middle circle. We can adjust the middle rig's radius to sit somewhere more like where we want it. And we can also adjust the X axis so we can move it behind our character so we can kind of visualize how that's gonna sit. So you make it right behind him. We can also adjust this to be 16 by nine. So we can be like, oh, okay, that's what it's gonna look like. So that looks pretty good. Uh, now, we also want to adjust the top value. So make this Y axis one. So this is what it looks like when we're at the top. So maybe we might wanna make it go a bit higher. So seven and 1.75, that looks good. And then make it zero for the Y. Okay, this is at the bottom, so maybe you want to make the radius a little bit bigger. And you might want to make it a bit lower, so that the camera can go really low. So, okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so for now, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. 
So let's bring this back to 0 0.5. So it's right in the middle. Very good. And I also want the character to kind of sit on the left side of the screen. So how can we do that? Well, the best way to do that is to affect the screen X. So let's go down to middle and let's drag this to the left. And so now you'll see that he'll kind of sit on the left there. So maybe if we make that 0 0.4, that would look pretty nice. And again, we'll want to come and adjust each of these ones. So 0 0.4 and screen X is here in 0 0.4. Very good, and now if we adjust this Y, you'll notice that this sits a bit nicer. Okay, so maybe for that the top one, let's make this one. You just have to manually, sometimes you have to just drag it a little bit for it to work. Uh, okay, now let's maybe drag this top one so it sits over a bit more. Okay. That'd be okay. You can also adjust the radius at the top. That's probably what's affecting the, the kind of curve at the moment. Okay, so we could probably make this screen X 0.4 now. And you can probably make this radius 5 at the top. And then that will, that will make that look nice. Or you can even make it like maybe 4. That'd be okay. Perfect. Okay, well, we can come and adjust these later if we want to. Um, also, if I click play now. Okay, and you'll start to move the mouse around. You'll notice all the thing, all of the uh, movements are actually inverted and it feels really weird. So we want to adjust that. But as you can see, we kind of have a nice camera here at the moment. So let's Let's just um, invert. So we basically need to invert each of them. So just unclick these two. And now if we try, so that's looking much nicer. We can even maximize this on play so we can have a bit more screen. There we go. Okay, so this is already feeling much nicer. Feels like a good sensitivity as well. And you can see when we look up and if we look down, that's very nice. But if we jump off here, you'll notice there's one thing that's kind of missing, and that's the collision. So we need to we need to set up some sort of collision system for the camera so it um, runs into walls and stuff. So if we scroll all the way down, we can actually um, collapse these aim ones, and that will collapse all of them. You can see extensions, and in extensions, we can set up a Cinemachine Collider, which essentially collides with walls. Um, a couple of things I like to change is the strategy. We want to usually pull the camera forward. That's what happens in most games. And we also want to ignore our player. So you want to make sure that your player has the player tag on it. If it doesn't, just make sure it does. And we also want to collide against the default layer. If you, if you have a special layer that you wanted to um, collide against, you can also do that. And I wanted to show you these um, damping options once we actually get in here. Okay, so once we jump in. Okay, so now that we're in here, let's just jump off here. Okay, and if we make the character walk about there, and I'm going to turn the camera into the wall. And you can see that now we're getting some nice collisions. Okay, so now what was that occluding and smoothing time that I was talking about? So if I untick the maximize play, and let's jump back into here now. Okay, let's jump off here, come around here, and we sc scroll down. If I occlude, because this is technically what occluding is, we're basically occluding the player, and that, that means we can't see him anymore, and it, basically it's snapping straight away to uh, a new position, but we can smooth it. So we can say damping when occluded, so we're going to smooth uh, the time when we're occluded. So just to, so you can see what's happening, if we make it 7, it's going to make it really slow, when we're occluded. So you can see it's smoothing in. So maybe you don't want it as quick. You can see it snaps back straight away. So if you adjust this, you'll see the opposite effect. So once it's there, and then it will go back to its position. So damping is when it you can see the player again and how quickly it will move back into position. And 
the other option is how, how quickly it snaps to that position. So you can set this one up a little bit. So it's not like snapping straight away, but then you get that kind of penetration of the wall there. It's your preference, but um, usually you probably want this a really small value, and then you want the other one a bit, a bit bigger. Okay, so for now we could just leave this at seven, and then for the other one we can just have that damping when occluded at zero. Perfect. So let's maybe bring this down to zero point five, back to back to its default position, or you can just drag it if it's not updating. But there's that position. Very nice. And if you're if you don't like seeing all of these different guides, you can just come and check that off, and that will fix that up for you. But when you're setting it up, I like to have it on, so it gives you a good idea of where everything's lined up. Now, one more thing that I like to kind of add and kind of makes the the game feel a lot lot more real is um, coming to your noise and actually adding a bit of Perlin noise. And you'll be like, oh, well, I don't want it to be too crazy, but I like to just put a bit of handheld normal mild on, even if it's just 1-1, one, one, and it kind of gives the camera a feeling of blowing in the wind. If we turn off the, the guides, you can see that the camera kind of feels like it's moving, and you'll notice when we go straight to the bottom, we don't get any more camera movement, as you can see on the left side here. And when we're in the middle, you can see that the camera is actually moving a bit and then at the top there won't be any movement. So this is really cool. So you can actually say, okay, if the camera's in the sky at the top rig, let's make the mild maybe like three. So it could be more windy when the camera's up higher to kind of give that sense of the wind kind of pushing the camera when it's up really high. I mean, that that's a bit unrealistic. Uh, let's You could drop this down to like maybe like 1.3. 1.3 and then jump back in there and then at the bottom it would be good having a zero because the, the camera is like grounded and it's not getting blown around and then when you move around it gives you a really nice feeling of how it feels all right so one other thing i wanted to touch on is how can we set up uh, the joystick movement and I've actually already got the settings set up but I just wanted to show you in case you wanted to set that up um, actually first in here you can see that our input axis name is mouse Y and mouse X so mouse X is left and right and mouse Y is up and down and we just need to set up our right stick control to basi basically match that and you'll get a really nice result from it so if you go to edit project settings input and then come down to the bottom I created two more inputs so you just come and add I think it was 18 I just made it 20 and then you can you'll get these two new inputs and you will just want to call it the same thing mouse X mouse Y make sure there's a space in between it so you can see here this is actually mouse movement so this is going to calculate our mouse for X and Y and you want 0 0 and 0 0.1 so this is our mouse movement and then at the bottom, these are our two custom ones. So you have gravity is zero, dead is 0 0.19, and sensitivity is one. And then our type is a joystick axis, because this is our controller. And the axis for X is three, and this is on Mac, I think on Windows it's four. And then on joy number, you just want joy get motion from all joysticks. And mouse, mouse Y, which is up and down, 0. 0 and 0 0.19 and then 1 same as the the X and then you want to invert it so you, you get that nice up and down movement and then again on Windows it's um 5 so if you're setting this up and you're like oh it's not working on one axis that's why so now if you test this out using the controller so I'm using just the controller now you get really nice movement nice and smooth and it stops when you're at the bottom stops at the top and it feels like a really polished camera system and this is all provided from unity's um, package manager and there you go all the collision all set up really nice and the good thing about cinema machine is that you can actually customize it to actually blend straight into cutscenes and stuff um, so you can have the camera 
when you hit a trigger volume, for, for example, you can then blend this camera straight into a cinematic camera and then blend it back out into gameplay. So you get the really nice cutscenes, kind of like you would in Uncharted or um, maybe like even God of War. They use the same kind of camera techniques, that one long camera cut. Um, so you can achieve that, this kind of camera system using uh, Unity's Cinemachine. Also, there's just one more thing I wanted to point out. You'll notice when we run forward, Okay, so let's say we run forward, let's just jump down here so you can kind of see. If we follow this, try and follow this line, we're pushing forward. The character kind of runs to the right a bit, so he's kind of being offset. How can we fix this? So if we jump back to our camera, you can see we have a binding mode. And right now it's simple follow with world up. We just want this to be world space. We just want the guy to run wherever he, he's running. So if we press play now, okay, let's jump down here. Okay, let's try and follow this this line. So now he's he's not drifting, he's just running in that straight line. So that's just a simple fix for that because basically before the camera was kind of binding to the character's position and was rotating it weird. And then it kind of be doing this over I mean this is more exaggerated, but this is kind of what was happening. So um using world space, we're just getting the actual target forward of our player input. So that's just a quick fix um, if you're getting that kind of offset. So you can download this whole project, excluding the animations, which you can download from the Unity Asset Store. Um, and then you can just plug it in. Or if you have your own animations, you can just plug that into the simple blend, blend tree that we have here. Let me just move this over. Yeah, so all it is is just one blend tree driven by uh, input magnitude. And this input magnitude is just set up through our movement input, which is actually another script that you'll see in another tutorial. I think it was the C-sharp movement um, setup. So you can just follow that, and that's this new script. Um, I've made a couple of changes, but I've updated that in the, the GitHub. So you'll be able to download the latest script. Or you can visit our site, which is the, the link below, and it has all the links that you'll need to download each script and set everything up. But the, the actual project will come with this all preset up for you. So that's really cool. And one other thing I wanted to show off is we have this really nice object minder script that we wrote. And for here, we have a tag that we're actually implementing, which is the environment. So you can see in here, I've kind of got an empty game object. And I just have the ground, which is the plane, with the ta environment tag. And each one is has got an environment tag. And then if we click play, normally, if actually, let me just turn off object minder so you can see what's going on. So if we try and do this normally, and say you want to move an object, let's try and move this, let's just rotate it down. So we rotate it down, we exit the game, it pops back. But with our object minder, because we have this tag set to environment, and our object minder is monitoring all of the environment objects. If we have that on, we start. And then we come to scene. Let's just rotate this. Let's even move this guy down. And then go to game. You can run across it, so there's nothing crazy happening. Cool. And then we go back to here. You'll notice that it's all still the same. And that's just a, a fun little script that I've added in there. So you can download this from our site as well. It's just called Object Minder. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you found this really interesting. We're starting to do a lot more tutorials now. Um, thanks for supporting FilmStorm, and I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial.